Hey, this is Rob with Tundra Headquarters, and today we're going to install the Volant Snorkel on my 2010 Tundra. This is made to install directly to the Volant cold air intake. This requires a little bit of cutting. I'm up here at uh, Dense Unlimited in Columbia, Missouri, and they're going to give me a hand with cutting this. Now, the first step is going to be for us to remove the fender flares and remove the inner fender well. Okay, so we're going to do things a little bit out of order here. So they're going to take the template that comes with the kit and they're going to tape it up. Now the instructions in the kit do call for using a 4 inch hole saw. See that it says to normally tap a hole in the middle with the uh, to punch the center and then use a 4 inch hole saw to cut it out. Okay, so here we have a perfectly cut hole all the way through. And we just found out, oh wait, there's another problem here. A uh, line here from my fender flares. Nowhere in the instructions does it say anything about uh, what to do with your fender flares. So I'm going to have to trim my fender flare to go around the snorkel tube. But luckily, I'm here at Dents Unlimited. Right now he's fitting up the air box, cold air intake with the new coupling tube. Everything attaches with hardware that's sent with the kit. After getting this assembly back together for the cold air intake, adding the new kit, we're finding that actually it threw off the, uh, the mounting for the cold air intake box. So nowhere in the instructions can we see anything that says that that's where it's supposed to be or that that's required also, but we're finding that's something else you also have to do. Keep that in mind that uh, you may have to also do the same thing on your kit. It's a pretty tight fit after getting that adapter plate on. Just be a little bit patient with it and work with it. So it clears everything else. We just have to uh, modify the fender flare. You will also notice there's a cutout in the tube that nicely goes around the antenna. Okay, so the hole is cut and prepped, ready to go. And the next step we've done is we've installed these small little threaded uh, spikes that as he hits it, it's going to mark the paint for all those little spots that need to be drilled for the rest of the hardware. Now the holes are marked, he's drilling the locations for the hardware to pass through. And on the inside, we've had to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts on the A-pillar that hold up the grab handle. The whole assembly will just pull out and up, pull away from the dash. The next step is to unbolt the airbag and get it out of your way before you drill these holes. But do not disconnect, only unbolt. Okay, so the airbag is unbolted and safely moved out of the way. Now we can drill the spots on the A-pillar without any worry about damaging the airbag. The instructions now say to use a unibit or a step bit, depending on what you guys know it as and we're going to enlarge it only from the inside. The A pillar apparently is triple walled and uh, you're going to enlarge it from the inside to three quarters of an inch. Not to go all the way through but just to be able to give you access from the inside. And something else we found is that the alignment peg here on the, uh, the trim piece, apparently that comes out directly behind the hole that marks. So you're going to have to remove that plastic uh, trim piece. Of course, it's still going to be held in place by the 10 millimeter bolt, so it's not necessary, but it's another one of those things that just wasn't included in the instructions. That would have been nice. Now with the holes drilled, Steve is taking some rubberized undercoating and going around all the edges where we cut and drilled, seal it all up and make sure that there's not going to be any rust. Can you give us any kind of an idea on what kind of lifespan that it would have? This is made for rubs, so it pretty well lasts the lifetime of the vehicle. All right. So with our holes drilled now, Steve's going to go ahead and put the silicone sleeve in that attaches the snorkel to the cold air intake, tighten down the hardware, making sure the fit is good. Okay, so after getting the hardware put back together and trying to tighten everything down, we noticed a pretty sizable gap between the body and the snorkel and we believe that's due to the length of the bolts that were included in the kit. So instead of um, tightening it down and just leaving it that way, we went ahead and took a grinder and cut it down to a half inch on the bolt. 
you can see that so about a half inch is what we've got left now and it's a much better size to work with. Now Steve is installing the top of the snorkel and we still have to reinstall the inner fender well and then we're gonna have to do our modifications on the fender flare. So right now Steve is marking his area to trim the bushwhacker fender flare so that it can be reinstalled up next to the snorkel. Okay, so we've got everything bolted back together and despite a few little problems here and there, we we're still able to install it and make it look pretty good here. It blends together, but if you do have uh, any bushwhackers or any other kind of fender flares and you want to install this, just be aware you're going to have to trim it. So there's the Volant snorkel attached to the Volant cold air intake, all ready to go. So thanks for watching.